What if you could grow plants in sand? A lot of people don't have fertile soil, so we end up buying bags and bags of it, or spend an extraordinary amount of time trying to enrich the soil we have. A large amount of the world doesn't have fertile soil, but there is an overabundance of sand. And what if we could grow in that? I started growing microgreens with clay pebbles kind of make it a set it and forget it system and after you get it set up which takes about 10 minutes pretty much just leave it alone I 3d printed a bunch of adapters to make it self-watering and I made different kinds to accommodate the various types of bottles so as long as everything was working with the clay pebbles I figured why not give sand a try I put a little bit of nutrients in the water to give the plants what they're missing in soil. Our first trial did really well. So we decided to try it a few different ways. In the first trial, I smoothed out the sand. And this one here, I just left it kind of rough. I made little pockets for the seeds. This one I did the same. It's gonna be some broccoli. And I used a shallow baking dish. This one, I used a deep one. We're going to grow some radish. Now I'm thinking radish microgreens have a rather long stem. So the deep dish will hold them up so they don't fall over at the edges. Here I have another baking dish with pak choy. And I've mounted this one up higher than the level. I didn't anticipate the capillary reaction of the water. I thought the sand would drain just like our clay pebbles. Leave about an inch of water in the bottom and the top of the sand would be dry. But no matter how high I filled it, the sand stayed wet. So I'm thinking maybe if I mound it up like this, it'll still get some airflow in there and we'll see how it does. I did the same with this glass meatloaf container. Now this is red cabbage, and I actually mixed the sand with the seeds and smeared it on the top. See how this one does too. Whatever happens, it's fun experimenting. Okay, I covered everything with foil, let it sit overnight. As we peek in here, we can see everything is starting to germinate. Check out broccoli. They've all sprouted. As long as there's moisture in here, I'm not going to uncover the radish. We can see right through the glass bowl. So we're just checking to see if everything's still a little damp. Because there's so much water in the sand and with the warmth and the foil, it's keeping a lot of the humidity in. Our pak choy sprouted there. And our red cabbage. They're all starting to sprout too. It's pretty cool, just overnight. All right, day two. Some people ask when I uncover my sprouts. And when they're like this, I'm still going to leave them covered. And you can see the foil is just lightly on here. I'm not weighting down my microgreens. These are getting bigger. And it's just loosely on top. You can see the radish in through there. Not even messing with that. I can still see the sand is damp. And they're doing okay. This one's popping up in the back. We'll close that. These guys are doing good too. You can see a little bit of moisture up on the top of the foil. That's what I'm looking for. If it looked real dry, I'd spritz it with a little water. And one more here. See how he's doing on day two. Awesome. Little fuzzy roots. All right. This is later in the day. It's 97 degrees. I think I should go check my microgreens and make sure they're not drying out. 
So we're just going to peek at everybody. It's starting to green up a little, getting a little bigger. I'm checking to see if they still have water in the bottles. You can see this is a little bit in the shade. This is a real sunny spot, and the sun is straight up over us. And it's 97 in the shade. So the radish looks like they're doing okay. These guys are pushing up on the foil a little bit. They look fine. I think they're okay. We're just going to leave them. And we might refill the bottle tomorrow. All right, day three. And you can see these guys are ready to get uncovered. This is when I pull off the foil. They're trying to get to the light. And he needs more water. So we're going to take care of that. See the radish about to push up on it. So are the broccoli. I can even tell that that's pushing up on it. So let's just go ahead and uncover it. You can see how they're trying to get out through the little opening there. And those are turning green already. So see how they're all aiming towards the center where the light was coming in? That's when I know I'll pull the top off and let them go. You can see there's still half a bottle of water in here. Now this was one that we trimmed up live. And I told you I was going to leave it. So we got a second harvest off of that. Here's some red cabbage that we did about a week ago. All right, let's check the broccoli. And I'm going to leave all this foil here just in case it gets hot and they start to dry out. I might put the foil back on. Those are all looking good. And we haven't done anything to any of these yet. This is day three. We haven't even opened this radish to even check on it. This is the first we're going to see it. There's the radish. Still a little bit of water in the bottle. You can see still a lot of moisture on there. That's why I didn't have to do anything to it. So I didn't have to come in here and keep spritzing it. They did okay. These guys are ready to go. They're pushing the top right off of it. And you can see how it's a little green in the front. We'll show you that in a minute. We have to fill up the bottle today. And there's plenty of moisture in the sand, so we're in no rush. And the last one here is our red cabbage. Try to get this off with one hand. And there we go. Awesome. Excellent germination rate. There's a little bit of sand, but as it grows, we'll brush it off. That's pak choy. You can see it's a little green in the front and in the back where it lifted up. They were already starting to green up. So we're just going to fill the bottle up. It's got plenty of nutrients, so I'm just going to put water in it. It's just that easy. And then we'll put it back up on the shelf. All right, now we're going to come back out and check these. See how they're doing partway through the day. All right, so this is six hours later. It's about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And you can already see the pak choy has greened up. Huge change just from this morning. As did the broccoli. And the radish is pepping up. So all the leaves are still small, but they're all starting to turn green. He needs a drink. 
You can see the little roots starting to head down to the bottom. These are the pak choy. And now you can see it's green all over. And that was just in six hours. And the red cabbage is perking up. Not to sand. As it starts to dry out, we'll brush it off. All right, day four. This is out at the crack of dawn. Adjusting exposure on the camera. Pest control running around in the back. The pak choy is looking good. Leaves are getting bigger. And we still don't need to put any liquid in this one. Awesome. Broccoli, day four. Long shoots. Bunch of leaves. Looking good. Radish starting to get tall. These guys don't take any time at all. This is day four. And pretty much if you needed a couple radish, you could already start cutting some of these and tossing them on your sandwich. And the pak choy is looking really nice. You can see these use water at different rates. So you're just going to have to keep an eye on them if you have several containers going. With this glass bowl, you can see there's still moisture in the sand. The dark bottle is a little harder to see, but you can tell how much liquid's in it. And every day, as it starts to dry out a little bit more, I just come and brush the top here and get a little bit more sand off. And I decided to put the cabbage up closer so it can get some sun instead of being way in the back there. I decided to put it up front here. And day five, just one day later, the leaves have gotten a lot bigger. And we've got awesome cabbage microgreens. They're ready to go. Those are big enough to harvest right now. And so is the broccoli. You can see you can cut it right here. And there's a lot of microgreens on there. And you notice there's not a whole lot of small ones like the pak choy. So if we cut this and let it go again, you'd probably want to get as much as the pak choy, just a couple more microgreens. Because this one, almost all of them germinated and grew at the same rate. There's just a few smaller ones at the bottom. So pretty much these are ready to go. Radish, ready to go. Isn't that awesome? And all we did was we refilled that one time, didn't do anything else to it. This pak choy is looking awesome. If you look down here, you can see what I'm talking about. There's a whole lot of small ones. So instead of harvesting down close to there, you'd harvest the top and let this set out for another week. You probably get a second harvest. There's one trying to get away. I'm going to taste it. Oh man, that's good. I love radish microgreens. All right, there's enough liquid in there. These are going to be harvested. I don't have to add any more. Just watch and see if this looks like it's dry. You can always put a little bit more in the bottle. It's not a whole lot of sand on it. All you got to do is just rinse it off, kind of like you do with your collard greens. But there we go. Five-day microgreens. Now, you don't have to eat all these at once. Harvest what you need. Let the rest of them keep growing. Kind of like this. This was our first one. It was our experiment. We harvested two-thirds of it and left one-third to grow. I just took the bottle off. because We were getting a little algae on the sand. And I just poured a little water or nutrients right down in there. Pop the lid back on. It's just a fun experiment. 
we already harvested two thirds of this, so we're just gonna let it go. And even uh, little critters are coming by for a little lunch. And I let him go, and he only ate about five or six leaves down there, and he took off. As long as he doesn't get on my new bowl. So we're gonna take some of this pak choy and put it in bigger containers. Maybe this milk jug we we're talking about or something else. Anywho, five days, you have awesome microgreens. You can let this go for another three or four days and grow some more. And if we can do all this and grow in sand, imagine how many people out there that are living in conditions where they can't grow food because of a lack of fertile soil. And if they can get sand, some seed, little nutrients, they can quickly grow some food. Now we're going to see how far we can take this. Stick around for more. Keep on growing.